And we're back with some more Mountain Blade Warband. And today we're going to be going through some very rapid levelling up here. Our party consists of a whole bunch of Kurgits that we hired. Oh, actually that reminds me, we should probably upgrade a bunch of those. And what we want to try and do is turn them all into Lancers as quickly as possible, because Lancers are incredibly deadly and dangerous and we would really like to have them on our side. To do that, we need to get them experience, and to get the experience we need to run people down and have our people introduce them to axes, swords, spiky things and all sorts of nastiness. Now we've come here to this area because it's got forest bandits. Forest bandits are the easiest type of bandits to kill. They're very weak, very easy to destroy. The only downside is they have bows, but pretty much all of the bandit types have ranged weaponry of some sort or another. Now there's a, a little bit of a meme in this game. It's the F1, F3 win f feature. It's where you hit F1, which brings up this menu, and then you hit F3 for charge. And when you have cavalry, that's sort of pretty much how it works. You hit F1, you hit F3, and then your enemies all die. If you look in the distance, you can see there's our enemies over there. So we're gonna hit F1, we're gonna hit F3, and our people are going to charge in and kill them all. This should only take a moment. After that brief battle, we should have another bunch of people ready for upgrades, and would you look at that, plenty. This brings us a little bit closer to having our unstoppable force. Oh, would you look at that, 18 more bandits have wandered in. No, no, don't go in the trees. We don't want to fight them in the trees, fighting them in the trees is uh, a little bit tricky when you're using cavalry. We prefer to fight them wide out in the open and run them down. Then we do the F1, F3 meme once we fight them, and we sail all of our Kurgits in to swarm them. Now this is only so successful because we have all of our people mounted. Now true, these bandits are not anything tough to be honest. But, oh, excuse me. It, it takes a little bit of concentration to add these. Yeah, but it does give us plenty of experience and we'll be able to level up quite quickly and get onto tougher bandits. Seriously? Did you? Well, okay, let's hope my horse is not injured in that. If your horse is knocked out from under you in battle, there's a percentage chance that it will end up injured and it will be unrideable afterwards. Our horse did not, so it managed to survive that unscathed, thankfully. I suppose it was a bit odd when I said I hope it was okay after it had just been axed unconscious. Unfortunately, no prison merchant, but we do get to upgrade some more of our people into Lancers. We're up to six. The plan is to convert as all of them until... What the hell? All of them. And then we'll be ready to take on the tougher stuff in this game. Remember, never feel sorry for bandits. They get exactly what they deserve. Oh. Ow. Ow. More bandits to feed into our experience. Yeah, cavalry. They really were just a little bit too OP if you ask me. More horsemen, more lancers, lots more bandits. More upgrades, so close. Give me all of those Lancers, excellent. All right, let's run down some more forest bandits, shall we? While out and about, we wandered over to Praveen and there's actually a tournament on. And if you've ever been over here, this place is great because all of the tournaments in Praveen, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's, maybe it's all of the, the areas belonging to Orange, but they're horses only. So let's just have a, a quick stop here and maybe get ourselves a little bit of quick cash. Ooh, that didn't look good. Now, because they're horse only, they're all lance. In fact, every single round of this is lance only, which means we should just be able to come here, come here. One down instantly. I should aim for a green one, shouldn't I? And done. This, this will only take a few minutes. And that was worth 3,890 dinars. Nice. More tasty bandit treats on the road. There's just such a simple joy in running down bandits and killing them. No one cares. I mean, if you went around and just murdered random people, the, the Empire would probably care. One of them would, would be bothered. But, you know, so long as they're bandits, you can just do it with complete impunity. 
No, river. No, thank you. Our cavalries don't like rivers. We'll try something riverless, thank you. I've been letting the upgrades uh, accumulate for a while, so now we've got nine lancers ready to be upgraded. You know what? Let's do that now. It only costs 40 dinars to actually upgrade these things. It's, it's sort of ridiculous. The economy of this game does not make sense. To, if I had to buy all the armor, equipment, and helmets to make one of these units, it would cost about 10 grand. But we can pay them for a weekly wage of 40 it it makes no sense but not going to argue it does make us rather deadly no oh, ambush what the hell is that no you can get ambushed going into a city it can happen anytime nope oh, yeah i think we got this Whew. The ambushes are based on the strength of your character, so the tougher you are, the bigger the ambushes and the meaner they get. So as the game goes on, you can get ambushed by four or five people, and it gets uh, rather uncomfortable. But it's fine. The worst thing that'll happen is if you lose, you get knocked unconscious and you lose half your resource, half your money, which can be actually rather painful. Oh, and they also take your pride and your sanity at the same time. Oh, would you look at that? It's 17 more tasty forest bandits right by that bandit camp. Yum, 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 yum. All of that hard training has paid off. We now have 24 of some of the toughest mobile units in the game. Uh, we're going to use them to go hunt some sea raiders. Hey, come back here, you. We're, we're, we're going to want a bit of a fight. Today, the gods will decide your fate. No, it, it will be a lance to your face that will decide your fate. Ugh, horrible map. Let's maybe see if there's something better we can charge them down on. Oh, look at that. That's it's a nice more... head you have on your shoulders. Would you look at that? Lots of plenty of experience for our troops. Just just lying about the place, waiting to get harvested. We are finally back to Rivage Egg with our uh, greatly improved people. So what we're going to do here is we're also going to check the tavern and discover, to our joy, that there's a ransom broker, which is amazing. This means we can go out and, yeah, whatever, and, yeah, 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 who cares? That's all I need to know. Then you better bring your purse. I've got prisoners to sell. We can sell off these sea raiders. They're worth 112 a pop. We are going to stay here. We are going to get capture as many sea raiders as we can, and we're going to sell them for a pretty penny. Also, we can probably get rid of some of this junk we've got in our inventory. Oh, would you look at that 18 tasty Today, sea raiders? decide your fate. Mm, 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 mm. This is going to be tasty. We have unfortunately ended up in a fair fight. There's 33 sea raiders against our 33 units. Well, it's semi-fair. We have cavalry, they don't, so uh, not really as fair as you'd think. Uh, everyone get back up here for a bit. We're going to make sure this is... Uh, uh, we're going to swing this in our favor as much as we possibly can. That's an awful, awful, awful lot of them. Oh, wow. Um... You know what? We're probably going to have to charge them down. All right, everyone, let's get ready. And go. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and engage them. I'm just going to act as a distraction while our lancers shred them from the back. That's probably our best bet. Also, we're going to get lots of prisoners out of this, though we'll only be able to carry five at a time. Such a wonderful fight has gifted us with such wonderful loot. That's it. Well, that, that helmet's better than what I'm wearing. All right, let me, let me sort out this inventory situation. This is one vitally important thing to remember when playing this game. When you have uh, any of these pawns here, you've got to keep an eye on them. And the moment their skills get to the point where you can put them on a horse, do so. And a horse just requires one in riding. That is it. Give them one riding point and you're golden. That means you can put them on a horse, and let me demonstrate. Over here you'll notice they've got that uh, availability for a horse. We are just going to slot in a Sumter. These have a speed of 37. There's a reason for giving them these terrible horses. Slower horses means they still get into combat, but they get into combat about the same time as your heavy horse. As opposed to if you give them better horses, they'll be faster, and then they'll get hit there ahead of all the heavy horse, and then get chopped down and killed. So give them a slow horse to start out with. It's a good idea. Less likely for them to run in and die. Now all three of our people are on horses, that's so much better because it takes forever to level someone up when they're not on a horse. They get left behind in the fights and they're of no use. You might have noticed that you spend about 90% of your time fighting. Uh, the other 10% of your time is spent sorting out your party screen, doing some upgrades and hiring people. Um, well, we have finally hit the point where we've got enough Kurgit Lancers that I feel safe. We can wander around pretty much anywhere on the map and we'll be safe enough to do it. The next thing we have to do, though, is uh, stage two of the plan. 
Stage two of the plan is we need to find our other five main companions. These companions are basically what this whole playthrough is about. You want to level them up. Uh, a good example here is Deshiva. She has, let me see your skills. She has a bunch of skills in stuff that we would like, like pathfinding, spotting, and tracking. Now those things are things we could, our character themselves could skill up in, but that would be a waste of points for us. We'd prefer to be, uh, well, we want to specialize in a different area. But she can do all of that for us. But uh, the problem is to level her up in all those skills, she's going to have to spend a lot of points. And it, she, the only way she gets points is if she gets a lot of kills. And the only way she gets a lot of kills is she actually has some skills in killing. So we sort of have to balance it where we get her enough points that she can level up and then dump all the rest of the points into the skills we want her to mule around for us. All of them pretty much have a purpose that way. For example, you can see over here, Deshiva has spotting, pathfinding, tracking. Alan has tactics. We're, we're going to mule out a bunch of skills to pretty much all of the companions. The downside is they're expensive. They are so expensive. For example, these Lancers here cost us what? Weekly wage of 38 dinars? No problems. That That's cheap. But just say we want to put equipment on our people. We have to buy them the armor and each individual piece, including the horses, the boots, everything. And that is incredibly expensive. It's... Uh, let's just go to the marketplace here and show you why this game gets so expensive. Here is just, say, some crude gauntlets. These are not really great gloves. They cost 1,553. Uh, here's a crude plate of... Pl here's a crude coat of plates. That's... 5,000 din dinars. That's that's insane. We're going to have to buy something about that expensive for every single companion, and there's eight companions. This is just incredibly expensive to get everyone fully equipped. You can steal a bunch of armor, but you won't get stuff this good. So what we want to do is make a lot of money, like just gargantuan amounts. But first, first we've got to find our companions. So we are going to hit up every bar and gin joint in all of Calradia. Well, okay, maybe not every bar and gin joint. These uh, big names here, they're cities. Those cities have taverns, and those taverns, they have uh, the potential to have our recruits there waiting for us. So what we want to do is just wander around the whole place, grabbing them as quickly as possible. So, uh, montage, I suppose? Deep inside the Saranid Sultanate, hidden at the very, very, very back area, in a tavern, we've managed to locate Khalif. Uh, she's a bit of a character, all right. Also, I'm pretty sure she can't, uh, well, ride a horse. We'll, we'll get her on a horse soon enough, though. And supposedly she's very good with knives. On the other side of the Sarnet Empire, we've finally found Germus. We've been looking for them for a long time. Ah, excellent. Welcome back, old friend. This guy is going to be our medic. Also, he gets knocked, un knocked unconscious a lot. You will notice that his uh, proficiencies with weapons are absolutely terrible. Meaning they couldn't do anything. They're just absolutely weak sauce. As well as that, when they start, their equipment is... Yeah, they're wearing a pilgrim's disguise and a staff. And why is it called a pilgrim disguise? He's... So he's not actually a... Never mind. All right, we're going to give him a bow anyway. Well, we will in a minute once you find another hunting bow for him. We're going to give him a sumter horse. Putting them on a horseback drastically improves their life expectancy and makes them far less likely to die. We'll, we'll get them armor or something later. Let's see if we've got a, a hunting bow lying around the place somewhere. This yellow Sarnid Empire, all down here, we found... This is our third person to find. What was everyone doing over here? Was there a party on or something? I, I don't know. But inside here, we've actually found Bunduk. Uh, Bunduk here, pretty handy fella. Well, they will be once we skill them up a bit. And they're actually eh, a pretty decent fighter. Starting off, they shouldn't be that bad. Now let's uh, equip them up and get out of here. After going all the way around the world twice, we are, we are back here and we've managed to find the second last companion. Yim Yimira? Yeah, well, great. She's going to be joining our group as well. She's also a bit useless, but we'll find a use for her. And finally, we have located the last one. Located in Wurchig, we've got Behester. It took a long time to find them. This is, well, yeah, unfortunate. Sometimes it's good, you'll find them quickly, sometimes you won't. But we finally got our hands on them. The final piece of the puzzle. Now we get to go on to stage three. Stage three is equipping our party with some half-decent gear. Uh, for example, you'll notice here that the Shiva is actually not that bad. She's got a bunch of sort of chainmail type stuff on, a good helmet, decent boots, and she's pretty much equipped with reasonably decent equipment. That's because we stole it all by killing sea raiders and taking their gear. Uh, as you go down here, though, everyone's equipment gets slightly worse until we get down to Yumira, who's wearing some sort of leather junk that uh, we picked up. That This is leftovers that other people got. What I like to do is take the best equipment and put it on the top people, and then it sort of slowly trickles down like hand-me-downs until it gets all the way to the bottom. Oh, I forgot to give him a helmet. Eh, never mind. What we want to do here is take everyone, and regardless of who they are, what they do, or what their skills were to start with, we're going to take them, and we're going to turn them into archers with a sword and shield combo. That's it. 
one bow, one arrow, one sword, one shield. There's ways you're supposed to customize them, like, say, Kalithir. When you get her, she's supposed to be, you know, your knife thrower, assassin-style person. Yet, don't don't bother. Someone with throwing knives on a horse is a waste of time, and you want to have them all on horses. So, our plan. We are going to go around, raid a bunch of sea raiders, and we're going to steal all their equipment until we've got everyone halfway decent. And this will be stage three. These things pretty much always degrade into a mosh pit of uh, cavalry just swarming around things and smashing them in the face. I'm not complaining, it's just sort of predictable. Running out of time to get this up, so there's one thing I'd like to cover before we go, and that is bandit layers. Now, this is something that I didn't get into for a very long time, but these are so incredibly valuable, it's just, it, it, you have to learn how to, to manage them. So this is a step bandit layer. There's also another couple of layers located about the place. For example, there is a forest bandit layer over here, and over by Rivichag, you'll find there is a sea raider layer. Now, there's uh, also a another one over here that I haven't located yet. We'll go over how to locate them, but the first thing I'm going to do is if you find one, and after you find one, you want to find the local lord. In this case, it's uh, Ichimura is the local city. So we want to find the local lord. The local lord is actually Tanja Nonin. We found him by just asking the uh, the person in here. If you go into the, you take a walk around the streets, you can find the guildmaster. So there's a guildmaster in here all the way at the end. You can talk to them and you can ask him, uh, let me see, can you tell me what you want to do? Who, who rules this town? And it will give you the name, which is Tanju Noonan, which is great. But then once you have that, well, what do you do? Well, you leave and you go into the actual castle itself. And normally you can find their missus upstairs. Inside here, you can ask them, I would like to know the location of someone and find the lord you're looking for. This per in the case, this person. Uh, they're in the field and should be close to Ichimura at the, at the moment, which is actually right outside the door. Now this is only if they're not already inside the castle. And as you can see, there's the air over there. Now let's go have a quick chat with them. We'd like to ask them if they have any anything they'd like for us from us. Yes, 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 at your service. Which is, yeah, they're indifferent to us. Uh, do you have any tasks for me? We have heard of reports of step bandits have established a hideout in this area and they've been attacking travellers. If you could find the air and destroy it, we would be very grateful. Aye, I can do that for you. Yes, we will. These are the best quests in the game. Namely because they're the only quests that are repeatable and there's no timer attached to them. All the rest have timers. We'll go over that later. So what we're going to do is go over here to the step bandit layer. And let me show you how you how you find them in the first place because these will be hidden until you get very close to them. I just found them as I was wandering around because, well, I have a little bit of experience. You'll see these bandits over here. These step bandits, you'll notice they're, uh, they're patrolling around the steps. Patrolling is fine. What we're looking for is people who are traveling. Uh, if you're far enough away from bandits, ah, here we go. See that bandit there? They're traveling. Any bandits that are traveling are heading towards their lair. If they're not traveling, if they're, say, patrolling or something like that, they're not heading towards their lair. So all you have to do is make sure you're far enough away from them that they don't run, and then you can tr follow them. And once you follow them, you can follow them right back to their lair. Another good thing is to follow them in the direction that you last saw them traveling, and then after you find them, you can usually tra use uh, the tracks on the ground to locate the lair. Anyway, let's get into these, because these are, these are my favorite part of this game. We'll pop right in here. We're going to attack the hideout. Ah, yes, I'd forgotten you say. Everyone follow me. And you notice everyone's got a bow. Ooh, that noise. There we go. That's a little bit lower down. Hey, we're going to have everyone follow me. We do want them all running in there higgledy-piggledy. This is actually a little bit of a tricky thing through here. So we're going to pop down here and we're going to find the bandits. These are probably my preferred methods because the people you get bring along are your team. Your whole team are with you, all the ones that you really want to get experience, and they get to have lots of experience killing these enemies. And we're also going to get a whole bunch of experience at the end, but let's make sure we survive this first. Our crew is still pretty weak. Nope, there's one. Never mind, let's keep moving. Now you will notice over there, there is a bunch of people, but they're not shooting back at us. Namely because we're too far away. So we're going to have everyone hold position here. And then we're going to start practicing our archery. Because we can. Also, our people get to practice their archery too. This is probably the most broken thing I've ever seen. You get to... These people are all the ones you want to get experience. And of course you as well. And you get to just riddle people with arrows. Oh, you. That guy's about to fire a lance at us. Kill him quick. Ow. Oh, Jesus. And yeah, there goes another one. I should probably be letting them get more kills, but you know what? This is their first run through. Right. Once you killed a whole bunch of those, you have to move on to the next stage. I think there's some more over this direction, if I recall. Unfortunately, this game is... Well, this was made by a small team, so these uh, these things never really change. Every time you do a step bandit, its camp is always going to be the same. Oh, and I forgot to tell everyone to follow me. Come on. But on the bright side, all of our people get to get lots of experience doing this. We'll tell them to hold position there. 
and we'll go forward to drill fire. You know what? Yeah, let's get that archery out. That guy throwing stones? Yeah, buddy, you, you shouldn't be here. Oh my god, my archery skills have definitely degraded over time. You stand, just stop swiping and just come straight at us, would you? There you go. Oh, Jesus. All right. Uh, I think there's a few more left up here, but this is pretty much a sweep. Let's go. And done. Next. Oh, we should probably grab some arrows while we're here. That's one great thing is you can grab arrows even if they've been fired. So despite being low on arrows, we can just pick up a few here. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone. Let's get moving. There's a couple more over this, uh, if my memory serves. You can actually check up the map and you'll see, yeah, there's a, another small bunch around the far end. These bandit encampments are actually, this step bandit one is pretty tough. All right, last few. I'm going to try and draw fire and let our people get in with the arrows. We want our people getting as much experience as possible. Oh, that is just wrong. <laughs> nice, nice. This is sort of the joy of the game for me. We get to do a whole bunch of these uh, combined with some other things. Oh, that's a lot of loot. Ooh, chicken. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, we've wiped the lair out. That's wonderful. Now that the lair is gone, we're going to go back and find Lord Noonan. Uh, we want to get a reward from him, and the reward is fairly substantial. Actually, let's have a pop back to uh, Ichimura here, and we'll go trade out, her, trade out what we got, and then we'll see what Lord Noonan has for us. Selling off all the junk we acquired just got us 390 dinars. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. But what's really going to put us over the top is when we can find the Lord who gave us the quest. Ah, there they are over there. Come back here, you. Excellent. Quest completed. We gained 1,500 dinars, 3 renown, 3,000 experience. We've advanced to level 11, and 3 of our characters have also advanced another level. This gives you so much experience. The cash is great, but the experience? The experience is absolutely amazing. Look at this. We've leveled up 3 of our characters. This is the fastest way to level up your companions that I've found, while it also netting you a bunch of experience from them shooting all the people that got in the way during the quest. This is just... Well, and it's also really fun to go down and murder a bunch of bandits. Well, that's bandit encampments and how you take care of them and how you find them. In fact, you can farm those uh, quests really easily. In fact, I'm looking around already to see if there's another one that's popped up. There seems to be no real rhyme or reason to how quickly they reappear. But the plan is going to be this. We're going to cover trading next. Trading is incredibly powerful. And then we're going to end up doing a big circuit of the whole of Calradia doing trading. And we can make an enormous amount of money doing that. And while we're doing the trading, we're going to stop off at these places every time and look, have a quick glance for a bandit encampment. If we find one, we do the quest. You'll average about two or three bandit encampments every rotation, which gives you lots of experience, lots of killing, lots of everything. And we can quickly level up, gain loads of cash. You'll make about mm, eight to 10 grand every rotation around the map, which takes about seven to eight in-game days. We're going to do an awful, awful lot of killing, and soon you'll be able to grind up all of your people into absolute monstrous killing machines, and we should have enough money to be able to afford to equip them in the best armor possible. And weapons too. Anyway, that's going to be for the next episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck!